Yo, what's up, YouTube? This is your boy, Alex. I ain't done a YouTube video in almost two days because I had to recover back to 100% because we have unpredictable weather. Sometimes it'd be too hot. Sometimes it'd just be chill. And I, and I didn't want my cell phone to get overheated and then it turns off in the middle of me filmmaking. Now, this is going to be a filmmaking video, okay? So, we're not going to be talking about no sex and dating in this YouTube video. And then I probably might take another, I might go one day off. And then maybe, maybe I come back with some very cool and badass YouTube videos. This one is something I've been wanting to do for a very long time. I told you I got a lot of categories in television and film of the cover. So this one's going to be called Sex Game, The Best Composers in Film, Television, and Anime. Now, the reason why... And the reason why I put anime in there is because this is only going to be part one of the video. And then in part two, it might take about a day or two days, but I have to find out who does composer with the anime characters. So that's so we probably just might take out anime and make that its completely own separated video. So we're going to change the title up and we're going to call it Sex Game, the best composers in television and film. The best composers. Now, I've never made a video talking about our favorite theme songs from movies and television shows. When you think of theme songs, music that motivates you, music that make you want to see the movie, that make you want to go see the television show. And there's a lot of you guys that like movies, that like television shows, and then there's people who like music in their movies and their television shows of a theme song. Like when you hear the theme song of Arrow. It kind of inspires you to want to be the Green Arrow. When you hear the theme song of The Flash, you want to know who's playing the music and the, and the guitar and the piano in the background. You want to know when you hear the song of Flash, you know you're going to be okay because The Flash is going to come to save you. And music like that is what makes you want to go watch movies and television shows in the first place. Then you have music that just motivates you. Like something inspires you and sometimes when you hear the song a song or a or a composer you be surprised of what they do with their music and we're giving these men the respect and the credit they deserve in the film industry in the television industry cuz these are cuz without composers movies and television shows as you know would be boring as hell like if we took a time machine if we took the avengers time machine and we went like 60 or 70 years back to the past when we first invented television. When we first invented filmmaking, you watch stuff in black and white. Then we had to add color. And then we turned around and people said, where, how come we ain't got no music in the movie? Like, they had to start adding music in the movies and the television shows. And you see, in Hollywood, we always give all the respect and all the credit to our actors and actresses you know, movie stars, celebrities, and we always give the credit to the executive producer, the producers, the directors, the screenwriters, the camera operator, but who we don't always give the respect and credit and admiration to are the music composers, the ones who put the music into the movies and the television shows. Like, when you first watch a movie trailer, when you first watch The Dark Knight back in 2008, the first thing you think of is that music of Batman. Like, as soon as you hear it, it makes your hair stand up, and it's like you get pumped up. Like, when you watch the Dark Knight tra tra um, tra um, tra trailer, I'm getting excited by the title of the video. When you watch the trailer, and you hear them go, dun, 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 and you hear the Joker come on, and he starts doing the laughing, and you can hear... Morgan Freeman as Lucius Fox say, there, there, there you go, Mr. Wayne. And then all of a sudden, you hear the Joker goes, that's a part of the whole plan. And then all of a sudden, you hear that huge dun, dun, dun. Same thing with The Dark Knight Rising. When they say a movie trilogy is going to come to an end. When I first saw the trailer of The Dark Knight Rising, a part of me wanted to break down and cry. Because when the director, Christopher Nolan, came out and said, we're not going to do no more Batman films, this is the third film in the trilogy, it almost makes you want to break down and cry. Because the idea of them saying we won't do no more Batman films, 
the music has a strong, powerful, psychological effect on the mind, on the psyche. Same thing when you watch Star Wars. When a lot of us watch Star Wars Episode 7, Force Awakens, when we saw Dark Vader's burnt helmet, our hairs stand up. Because you can hear the legendary, iconic voice of Darth Vader. You can hear the breathing. You can hear Luke Skywalker give the speech from the original trilogy. Like when he says, the force is strong in my family. And then you can hear the legendary Star Wars theme song in the background. And then he says, I have it. My sister have it. Because he says, my father. Then he says, I have it. My sister now you have that power too and then all of a sudden it cuts to the next scene and then your hair is still standing up because you can feel that music hits you because it's something you grew up in high school and college so we got to give the composers their respect their due there are some guys that get nominated for oscars academy awards so that's why this video is getting made it's a part of my series of movies and television filmmaking coming in at number Six is Blake Negri. Sorry if I apologize if I messed up the last name. Now, if you don't know who he is, don't don't be bothered. I didn't know who he was, but you know his work. If you watch the Flash television show, he did the theme song for the Flash. Anytime this song hits, it makes you feel like it inspires you to want to be the Flash. A lot of us wish we had his speed to go back in time and fix all our mistakes, right? It just makes you want to do it. But then at the same time, he's good at giving every character their own song. You look at Reverse Flash. All of a sudden, you know what it feels like when a villain's coming for you when you hear his theme song. Zone gets his own theme song. Killer, um, Killer Frost. You know, every character that's a villain gets their own theme song. The trickster, um, the thinker, you know, all these characters get their own theme songs. But it starts with The Flash. On the other hand, he's good at doing the Arrow television show, where he's able to get you serious and pumped. Like, every time I watch the Arrow television show, no matter what season it is, season one, season two, season three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Every time I watch it, it makes me want to go to 24-Hour Fitness, and it makes me want to get on the arm bar and do the same workout that Oliver Queen does. Like, every time that song comes on, that's the first thing I think of. It's time to take my ass to the gym, just like Oliver Queen does. He's even done the theme song for Supergirl. He also did it with uh, an animated movie 25 years ago called Lion King by Walt Disney. He did that, too. And he also did Legends of Tomorrow. And a lot of people don't know that he does the composed work, the music, to that show. That's why when you watch the show, the music is what draws you in to watch those shows. He's even done some blockbuster movies as well. Coming in at number five is Marlon Manson. He's a songwriter, he's a producer, he's an artist, he's a guitar player. But he also is also credit. We're being a composer. Some people don't think he's a composer, but he is one. Because even though the Resident Evil movies weren't that good, every time they do a big budget horror film, first thing they do is they call Marlon Manson. The tracks on the first Resident Evil movie was banging. Like, the fact that he's on the piano, no words, no lyrics. You're like, oh shit, who is that? It's Marlon Manson. And the fact that he could do that with a piano, and then it gets you pumped and hyped for the movie. Every time he does a Resident Evil movie, you know it's his signature because he's doing the songs. And you're getting pumped up to want to go to the movie. When they release the trailer, they make sure that one song from the soundtrack is on that first trailer. And that's how they sell the movie. And he's good at doing that. He did it from Chucky. Uh, when they did the Chucky movies. He came in there and that one he added songs and lyrics to. But Resident Evil, it's like 
you know you're going to get the shit scared out of, but when you hear the music, you can't deny that that's what brought you to go see the movie. Now, there are some people that do not like horror. Trust me, I went to film school. There are some people who do not like horror movies. And then I have some friends in the filmmaking school that, that they don't watch horror, but they do understand that that's a part of the Hollywood genre. So everybody has their favorite genres. Like, my mother, she loves horror. My dad, he hates horror. Now, me, on the other hand, I'll watch some horror, but I'm not going to watch it all the time because my genre is westerns, thrillers, action thrillers, martial arts. That's what I live for is martial arts. So everybody has their favorite genres. So I understand if a lot of people get upset if I'm talking about horror. It's, it's understandable. It's human reaction. It's normal to react to something good and something bad. That's why I don't make too many videos about horror. Because when I did in the past, I don't, my videos don't get very well received when I talk about it. Because there's some people that do not like horror, and I understand it. <laughs> Coming in at number four is John Carpenter. Now, he's a screenwriter, he's a producer, he's a director, and he's also known for doing theme songs. Now, he's done the soundtrack to Escape from New York, Escape from L.A., he did the soundtrack, composed music of the movie called The Thing. Now, he does science fiction and horror. And he did one that scares the shit out of all of us. Halloween. He gets on that, when he gets on that damn piano, I don't know what comes over him, but when he gets on that piano and he gets down on that piano, the first thing I'm doing in the movie theater is looking for the exit because I'm not waiting for Michael Myers to come get me. I'm looking both ways. As soon as you hit that piano, I'm like, oh, shit. And the fact that you don't want to watch no horror movies, but he has a way, as a director, of pumping you up for the movie, even though you know it's horror, it's like, I don't want to watch no day. If I'm taking a girl out to lunch or dinner, I don't want to watch no Michael Myers. It scares the shit out of me. It scares the shit out of the girl. But he has a way of convincing you to come to the movies with that theme song. And it's like he has made this theme song last for 30 years where most theme songs uh, don't get that impact. So you got to consider his skills in, in that. A lot of people don't realize that's actually his first job title, then filmmaking. Coming in at number three is, is Heim Zoomaker. Now, he's someone who I have gotten comfortable with. College, right now, he I got comfortable with all his theme with all his work. He did a movie called Um He did a movie called In Time, Badass Theme Song. He did the Dark Knight trilogy. I had never seen somebody do the Batman theme song in a way that make you just want to just be Batman. Batman begins. Dark Knight, the Dark Knight Rising, turn around and do it again with Interception. Because that's what made me want to go watch the movie Interception. Because when he broke down the theme song, it was like he was telling you the movie without even telling you the movie. And you could feel the emotion from the trailer where you see Leonardo the Capital have flashbacks of the past. And you hear one of the other actors tell him... Um, you need to get control of it before it gets control of you. And when you hear that, dun, 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 you, you know some shit is going to pop off. That's why I watched Interception. And he did it again with Man of Steel. The fact that he could make Superman theme song so good, and then when he take off and fly, it's like, he got you thinking that when you hear that theme song, some part of you want to fly like Superman. Because the way he's got your emotions invested into the movie. When it's time for Superman to fight Zod, song come back on, you, you, want, you think you're the one that's fighting Zod. That's how powerful the music is when he does it. Same thing when we get to Batman versus Superman. The way he did Batman's theme song is like, you know, if you go into a dark alley, you know Batman's waiting to kick your ass. When I see a dark alley, the first thing I'm doing is I'm looking for the lights. I don't want to see no Batman come like, where are you? Oh shit, it's Batman. That's how he does with his songs. The guy is classical. And the guy's been around for like 30 plus years. Gotta give him the respect. <laughs> Coming in at number two is Bruce Valker. 
Now, a lot of people heard the name, but a lot of people don't know what he does. And you see the t-shirt, right? You see Dragon Ball Z, right? The guy is famous for taking the anime characters in Dragon Ball Z and bringing the characters to life your very eyes. He is the one who did the theme song for Goku. When Goku goes Super Saiyan, he did the theme song for Goku. When it was time to do Piccolo, he brought the life of Piccolo to life as a character. Same thing with Gohan when he goes Super Saiyan 2 or he goes Mystic. A lot of our favorite anime characters in Dragon Ball Z is a result of his music. The Ginyu Force, when you know the Ginyu Force is coming, you know the song is banging when he's putting the life into the character. Like, he makes the character come though. He makes you like the characters. He makes you invest into the characters in a way that no one else can. So if you like Piccolo, the way he does Piccolo's character when he fuses with Kami, you're like, oh shit, so that's what a supernamic feel like. Like, with Piccolo's song, it, it gives you a spiritual awakening when you're listening to Piccolo. With Goku, it's like, you know the hero's coming to save the day. With Gohan, it's Warrior's Redemption. And he even done the songs with villains. Like, when he did Majin Buu's theme song, it's like, that's some badass rock with Majin Buu's theme song. You know, and then he does it with Frieza. With Frieza, it's like, you're terrified that somebody in the world would do the type of shit that he does. And I'm talking about the character Frieza. Same thing with Sale. When he did Sale's theme song, it's like, he took the rock music and the piano and with sale it's like oh shit it's like it's got a badass rock feel he's the super villain but the fact that he has a hard beat it gets you invested to the character of sale because you're curious what type of super villain is going to do some crazy shit now that's how come people love the anime of dragon ball z now, I don't expect everybody to like Dragon Ball Z. I'm talking about how the music grabs your emotion and gets you to believe in something. If it weren't for music, a lot of us would not be able to intertwine with different personalities. All right, coming in at number one is John Williams. This man is a legend. This man is an icon in the film business. Television and film, been in the game for 40 years. That's four decades he's been around. The guy knows how to make music grab you. Star Wars. You hear the theme song of Dark Vader. There's a part of you that want to do the breathing of Dark Vader. He brought Dark Vader song, Duels of Fate from Phantom Menace. Revenge of the Sith. He's good with that kind of music. And the fact that he's famous for one theme song, Superman, when they couldn't get nobody to actually do a good interpretation of Superman, he did. To this very day, when you see that first Superman with Christopher Reeves and you hear the way it, it, it pops up, there's a part of you that make you feel like you are Superman. The way he did the original Superman. Same thing with Jurassic Park. The original 1994 classic. When he does Jurassic Park, he makes you sit down and he makes you think and make you reflect on life in general. He makes you look past fame, fortune. And this is with the music. He makes you sit down. When it comes to Jurassic Park, he gives you an idea of what nature is with animals and mankind. With Superman, he got you believing in the fact that, yes, men can fly. And when he does Star Wars of any character, Dark Vader, the Emperor, he got you feeling the emotion in the character. If it's Vader, you're going to know it's Vader. If it's Obi-Wan, he's going to make you feel Obi-Wan. If it's Luke Skywalker, he's going to make you feel Luke Skywalker. If it's Yoda, you're going to feel Yoda. These are my best top picks of the best comp um, composers in television and film. So I just wanted to make a short YouTube video. Until next time, peace.